Now some of you may be wondering, was that even worth doing? Was it even worth fooling with a 30 foot double row like that just to get this many peas? What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It's a beautiful Saturday, April 13th here in South Georgia, and it looks like we finally got some English peas filled out and ready to harvest. So on today's video, we're gonna assess these two rows, double rows of English peas here behind me, see how we did, talk about why they're starting to look so rough right now, and talk about why your pea growing season may be completely different than my pea growing season. So we've got two double rows of these PLS 595 English peas here. Trellis with our little simple T-post and string trellis. This first row was planted before that second row. This first row was planted, I think, around mid-January, maybe just a hair later. And then this row here was planted about, I'd say, early February or so. So as you can see, this first double row is loaded up with full pods of peas. We can look at those and tell they're bursting at the seams full and ready to harvest. This row over here that was planted a few weeks later, still got some blooms on it. Got a decent amount of peas on there, but they're nowhere close to being full yet. So it's pretty easy to tell when English peas are ready to harvest because like I said earlier, they'll plump up like this one here is. This one's starting to fill out a little bit but not near as full as this one. We'll open this one up here so I can show you. As you can see, we got a ton of nice big green peas inside that one. We can still pick the pods that look like this and there are some small, little bitty, early peas, young peas, whatever you want to call them, baby peas inside there. But if we pick them at this size, it's gonna take a lot more pods to fill our freezer bag. So ideally, we like to wait until they fill out like this one here. So I'm gonna go down this first double row and harvest all those pods that are nice and filled out. We'll see what we get. Then we'll talk about why some of these plants aren't looking so hot right now and why we might not get a whole lot more. All right, so I walked that row up and down several times and I think I got them all. And for some of you that grew up picking peas like I did, you know there has been many a whooping administered for not picking the peas well enough. So you gotta make sure you get them all. Now by no means is this my best harvest ever from a 30 foot double row, but it's not terrible either. I don't think we're gonna have to clean out the freezer or anything to make room for these, but we should get a little bit in the freezer. And so that was our first harvest off that row. Sometimes we will get multiple harvests, a second and a third harvest from a row of English peas, much like you would a row of bush beans. But I think that may be all we get from that row because a lot of these plants here already look like they're toast. Now, some of the plants do still have some green growth on top, but we're not getting any new blooms on those, which tells me these here are about done. Now some of that might just be due to the age of the plant. Some of that might be a result of how much rain we've been getting. We got five or six inches earlier this week, so that plot has stayed pretty waterlogged for a while. But most of it just has to do with the spring temperatures we've been getting lately. So we're in the high 70s today. Earlier this week, we were in the low 80s. Next week, we're supposed to be in the low to mid 80s. And English peas don't really like temperatures in the 80s, at least temperatures down here in the 80s. And that's why I told y'all when we planted these English peas back in mid-January that if you wanna grow English peas in the South for spring harvest, you gotta gamble a little bit. So yes, it's a gamble planting these things in early to mid-January because we can get some pretty cold temperatures still between January and say March, but that's just a risk you have to take because these things don't like our mid to late spring heat down here. You gotta get them in earlier. You gotta take some chances and hopefully the plants will make it through that last part of winter and it'll pay off and you'll get some peas. And so English peas are one of those things where our great long growing season down here 
isn't that great. We hear from northern growers all the time that say, I'm so jealous of your long growing season. Well, don't be that jealous because you can grow English peas a lot better than we can down here. I've also had people tell me about my string trellis here that oh, that's not nearly tall enough for English peas. My English peas will grow up the entire side of the house. And I've seen pictures of English peas getting that tall, but they won't ever get that tall down here because the heat will get them before they do. So although you may not be able to plant as early as we can plant down here, be thankful that you can grow English peas much more abundantly than we can grow down here. We're just scrapping to get a few bags for the freezer here and there, whereas you'll be enjoying them for months on end. So we saw how rough that first row looks, and like I said, those are pretty much toast. I might as well pull up my T-post, get my string up, pull up those plants. Looking at the second row here, looks a good bit better but we can see at the bottom of the plants we're starting to die off a little bit down there got some yellowing and browning going on so all we can hope for here is that these hang on long enough for all those pods we have out there to fill out I doubt we're going to get multiple harvest on these here but we will get one good harvest if they'll hang on long enough for the peas we have out there to plump up now some of you may be wondering, was that even worth doing? Was it even worth fooling with a 30 foot double row like that just to get this many peas? Well, for me it was because of my rotation and that little bit of space that I had available. When I planted these, there was really nothing else I could have planted right there that would have went along with my timeline. My onions are almost ready to pull. I wanted something that wasn't gonna outlast the onions because we're gonna cover crop this plot as soon as the onions are out so my timing of everything worked perfectly just didn't get as many peas as i would have liked to have gotten i would have liked to have been able to get a second maybe a small third harvest off these that's not going to happen but we'll be happy with what we got so while there are some things down here that we can kind of goof around and not worry about being that timely with planting them, things like peppers, sweet potatoes, we don't necessarily have to get our sweet corn in that early. But with these English peas, we have to be on top of our game. We've got a small window. We've got to get them in. And then we just got to cross our fingers and hope it all goes well. Some springs are better than others. Some we get one harvest, some we get multiple harvests. Just all depends. You never know until you try. So I hope this was a valuable lesson for everybody, valuable for those of you in the South to understand why you've got to get these things planted so early and valuable for those of you in the middle and northern part of the country that might not understand why we can't grow English peas like you can. Now you see what happens to the plants once it starts warming up down here. And if you want to learn more about planting on double rows, which works great for a lot of different vegetables to maximize space in the backyard garden, watch this video when we planted one of those double rows of peas. We'll walk you through the process and show you how we get those double rows planted. So check that out. We'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.